Hi, I'm Sven Hosford, and I'm today at St. Clara, and I'm talking with Peg Lombardi. Hello. And she is teaching the Creative Mindfulness class, Mondays at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So, um, great to have you here. Thank you. Nice to be here. And how do you, how do you like uh, St. Clara overall? I love St. Clara. Yeah, isn't it's, it a great place? Oh, it's a fantastic place. I have just learned so much since I've been here. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because you're supposed to be the teacher here. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so, tell us about this class you're teaching. It's Creative Mindfulness. How do, creative what does that mean? Creative Mindfulness. Uh, at first, I started out thinking I was going to be teaching art uh, because that's my background, teaching art. But I've learned that I'm learning about how beneficial art is to the people here at St. Clair and mm -hmm. to everyone actually. I've always felt creativity and art were where everyone meets their soul. Mm -hmm. So with that spirit, it, with your spirit coming out as you become more creative, you realize that it's for a reason. There's a reason. And why do you say that, that when you do art, you're Say it again. Your spirit meets your soul. Yes, your your actually creativity is our soul. Our that soul is, is our soul is coming is forth. Naturally creative. So when we're doing something creative, you you can get closer to your soul, to your spirit, to your your um, essence. And therefore, when we are teaching, when I'm actually not teaching this art class, but just presenting it, giving the materials and the ideas to the class they actually take it and it becomes part of them. Mm -hmm. And they, it's the time that's spent for them to be in a place in their mind that is very peaceful and calming. Hmm. Now, this isn't an art class per se, and it's not exactly art therapy either. Exactly. That's why it's this creative mindfulness, this new kind yes. of thing in between here. It is, because I'm, I'm giving them the knowledge that I have in art, but I'm not making them follow any strict guidelines for how to do something. Everyone in the class does it their own way, and they get something out of it because of what they put into it. That's very interesting. Now, how did you come to be doing this? Where are you in your life that this is it's very interesting. your, your well, path? I, uh, I've been through many different phases of art. I started, um, I took art, fine art classes for two years. I took many individual art classes. I took private lessons in portrait painting. Um, I've had lots of background in art, but I didn't really discover I was an artist until I started to create on my own without being told what to do, without being guided um, by researching and learning what I wanted to, to do. I learned how to share it with others. And how does that Bring about healing. How does that help you heal? It helps you heal because as you create, as you, you are making something or putting something down on paper or canvas, you are basically connecting with your real true self. And you're bringing that, that out without even knowing it, just by learning how to use those art supplies and materials to put something down on, on paper. Let's say it might be a watercolor or a drawing or a, a painting, an acrylic painting. Getting in touch with how to use those materials and then doing something with it, that's you, that's the individual coming out. So what, what kinds of conditions or what kind of uh, situations is this good for treating? It's wonderful for so many things. Every one of us needs it. It doesn't matter what our uh, specific issue is. But we've found that it's very helpful with uh, extreme pain management, with uh, stress management, with people who have had addictions. All sorts of uh, people who come here to Seclair have found that they are able to get out of their busy mind and into their peaceful right mind, which is their, their frontal lobe, which helps them to feel at peace and, and very calm while they're doing these art projects. Well, now explain how that works. How is it that somebody can come in for pain mm -hmm. and do art and, and that actually has a healing effect? Explain how that works. Well, they don't believe it when they first start out. They come in and say, well, I have so much pain, I can't really get into this. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm, I've been sent to this class. And at the end of the class, when they're asked, 
How did you feel doing this? I forgot all about my pain. I didn't remember that I had pain. I forgot all about my stress or the things I was worried about when I got here. That just dissolved away with doing this art project. So that's very interesting. So they forget about their pain mm -hmm. while they're doing this. So they still have the pain, but they've learned that the pain itself is also part of the function of the mind. The pain center is in that part of the busy mind that keeps reminding them that they have pain. But when they get out of that into the calmer frontal lobe area of their right brain, they are busy with the project. They don't feel the pain. They can't That's sense the pain. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about why I want to come to your to this class. This, this, this so, so many great things. Well, this is everyone, really good about... Everyone. Yeah. And I, I try to explain this. I teach children and adults. And when I teach the adults, they have much more stress and fear than the children because they've built that up over their lifetime. And that fear that they have that they're not going to succeed or they can't do it goes away when they see that it's something that everyone can do. And when they get into their right brain, they start to do it without realizing... I don't have to have any rules here or any instruction to do this. It's natural for me. And, I, and then it's helpful to everyone, whether they have a specific uh, psychiatric issue, uh, uh, physiological issue, uh, mental issue. It's something that actually benefits all of us because it's how we were created, to be creative. So when we're being creative, we are in that connection with our, our spirit and being told, this is right, this feels right, and then we're calm, and it does give us that feeling that we're doing something we should be doing. It's very difficult to convince some people to do that, to sure. try that. Sure. But once they do, they're happy that, to do That's it. fascinating. So you can almost call it get into your right brain class. Yes, yeah. that's what it is. And what I find mm -hmm. fascinating, too, is that as we get older, we get more fearful about something that's so simple, taking yes. a pen or some colored oh, pens absolutely. to paper. absolutely. All my children that come into classes from, from the five-year-olds up, uh, up to high school age do not seem to have that fear. Uh, it mm. starts to happen after they're about 10 years old. People start to build up that that. And it's the fear of being judged by somebody else. Not being good enough, not yeah. being able to make it look real enough. And that's when we start to try to teach people over 10 that there is a process and a way to do it. And if you want that realism, here's how that's done. But the expression is the most important thing for all people take, doing any art. Well, that's fascinating. Thank and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to taking the class now. Good. Thank and, you. I hope uh, you will. Just a reminder, we've been talking with Peg Lombardi mm -hmm. here at St. Clair, and she teaches her creative mindfulness class. And I have to make sure to check that's the spelling right. on that. Creative <laughs> mindfulness class. Monday at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And I hope everyone will come.